uh, stopped working. So um, now it's just collecting audio from around the room. So if you don't want to say something you'll be embarrassed about when it's on the internet, um, don't talk about it. Because now it's going to basically collect everything in the room, um, including all your, uh, all your weird Fortnite stories. Um, so yeah, there you go. Yeah, all your all your battle all your battle stories. Okay, um, so anyway, my my lapel mic doesn't work anymore. Anyway, moving on. I haven't heard that name since So, okay. <laughs> action time. You will need some paper for notes and doing practice. Even if you're not the note-taking type, please have some paper out for practice because we're going to practice balance and some kind of reaction. And I'm going to leave the light on because it's uh, not a tremendous amount of light coming in this room right now. So, again, you said we finished this, which is cool. All right. My hope was to use the entire class day to uh, do chemical reactions and balancing, and that's what I, we're going to do today. So the important thing is when you balance chemical reactions, you're making whatever's on the left equal whatever's on the right. We forgot to do the crossword. I'll do the crossword again in the class. Um, you're making whatever's on the left be whatever's on the right. Okay, that's balancing chemical reactions. Whatever elements you have to start with, you have to end with. And there are some rules. They are immutable. Do not, change, do not uh, violate these rules. Actually, they're not all that immutable now that I think about it. First rule is don't change subscripts. Okay? Once you have the proper chemical by, uh, by listing by the subscripts, don't change them. Don't change the subscripts. Because if you change the subscripts, you change the chemicals. And we did that. We made the chemicals in the last unit. Now we're going to balance them. <clears throat> what is this chemical, by the way? Uh, uh, hydrogen sulfate. Good. It's hydrogen sulfate. Again, everything in this class is binary. One positive thing, one negative thing. So hydrogen sulfate. Not hydrogen sulfur oxide. Hydrogen sulfate. So when you have a polyatomic, that polyatomic stays that polyatomic in pretty much every case. Okay. In this class, there's going to be very few exceptions. So balance polyatomics first and realize they move as a block. They move as a block. And lastly, this is more just a hint. If you have something all by itself, a single element, save those for last because that's going to be the easiest way to balance, is balancing a single element by itself. So that's going to, since that's going to be the easiest thing, save that for last. And then when, this is not a rule, it's another hint, it's a technique. If you find yourself trying to balance a bunch of odd numbers, odd numbers don't like to balance, they're tricky. So the best thing to do is should you find yourself trying to balance a bunch of odd numbers, double everything. If you double everything, it's going to make your life a lot easier. numbers in front of chemicals called coefficients. Now these coefficients do not change the chemical, they change how many of each chemical you have. Okay, so once you have the proper number of compounds, you don't change those compounds at all. What you only change is how many of each of those compounds that are present in the reaction. So if you run uh, high voltage through water, you get oxygen and hydrogen. If you take those oxygen and hydrogen and put them in a balloon and light them on fire, they're going to go bang! And they're going to make a big boom, which we actually will do next week. Uh, 
and they will, the hydrogen and the oxygen will come together to, to produce water. Now, this is a chemical equation, but it's not balanced because there's two hydrogens here and two hydrogens here, which is great, but there's two oxygens here and only one oxygen over here. It's not balanced. So to balance it, what we do is we put a two, a coefficient of two, in front of the water. That balances the oxygen. Can you see how that balances the oxygen? Mm -hmm. So one times two equals two times one. But by balancing the oxygen, we unbalance the hydrogen, and now you have two times two, two times two. So you now have four hydrogens here. You need to put a two here to balance the hydrogen. This is referred to as a balanced chemical equation. There's the same number of things on the left as on the right. And here's the beauty of this unit. If you spend the time, you can't get them wrong because you're always counting. You're counting two times two is four, two times two is four, four hydrogens balance. One times two is two, two times one is two, the oxygen's balanced, it's balanced. If you take the time to check your work, you won't get them wrong because you're like one, two, okay, two, six. Okay, I gotta go back there, make that six, eight, six, oh, gotta make that eight. If you spend the time to balance, you'll always get it right, it's just counting. Okay, questions? Yeah, thumbs up, this makes sense to you so far. Okay, now, there are five basic reaction types that we're going to learn in class. I hope to get two, uh, three of them done today. The first basic reaction type is called synthesis. A synthesis reaction is a reaction that occurs to make two things into one thing. Just like it sounds. Synthesis. Com composition. To make something. So a synthesis reaction simply takes two things and makes it one thing. <laughs> now the first one I'm going to do is pretty fun. This is just magnesium wire. Magnesium wire is pretty cool. It's uh, magnesium is an exceptionally not dense metal. I don't know if there's a if there's an antonym for density, but it's an exceptionally not dense metal. Um, a magnesium alloy is used in airplane wings to make them light. So magnesium is just mg, and I'm going to look for a little s after the mg. What does the s represent? Solid. Solid. And uh, I'm going to heat it up so it reacts with the oxygen and air. And what does the G represent? Yes. Yes. And this is going to make a compound of magnesium oxide. Now, we learned last unit that magnesium has what charge when it's in a compound? Plus two. And oxygen has what charge when it's in a compound? Minus two. So MgO is just great. Okay. Now, is that a balanced chemical reaction? No. Exactly. No, because there's two oxygens over here and two oxygens over here. I bet you could balance this. So balance this by placing coefficients in front of the compounds. So, um, to paraphrase, you realize there was two oxygens here, there need to be two here, so you put a coefficient of two here, that balances the oxygen but unbalances the magnesium. To rebalance the magnesium, put a two here, and this is now balanced. Again, always check your work. To mag, to mag, to aw, to aw, we're good. So, magnesium is commonly used in fireworks to make a big bright light. It's pretty bright. Uh, no, it's gonna be bright. It's not gonna be loud. The the amount of energy that, that gets released when magnesium reacts with oxygen is uh, is considerable. So it makes a very very bright light. Oh, that's light. Yeah, it also makes a little bit of ultraviolet. So I recommend you don't do it without a flash shield in front. 
Uh, so, hence this. Now, this is really neat. Look at it. Put it down. Magnesium, guys, look up. Magnesium is a metal. You saw that. It's a metal wire. And oxygen's a gas. But magnesium oxide is neither of those things. Magnesium oxide is uh, a powder. Yeah. So, the compound that is made up from magnesium, a metal, and oxygen, a gas, is not like either of them. Um, magnesium oxide is just a powder. Pretty cool? All right, let's do another one. One of my favorites is uh, zinc metal. Guys, zinc metal is a very, very useful chemical. And uh, I'm going to use zinc powder, and we're going to react it with sulfur. Now, sulfur is very strange. Um, if you remember the video, sulfur makes these rings of eight sulfurs, these crazy little ex uh, high, like octagons, and it's also solid. And when they react together, they're going to make the zinc 2 plus sulfide. They're going to make zinc sulfide, which is also going to be solid. So go ahead and balance this as I grind up our chemicals. <laughs> this in January. You're going to be doing your own reactions once you've learned all the math. So you've learned how to make compounds, and today you're learning how to balance chemical reactions. And then in January, you're going to learn the math about how to make each thing, like how much you need of this to make how much you need of this. And you're going to do something like this. You're going to grind up your chemicals. This is called a mortar and pestle. This is called a mortar and pestle. So this is one of the things you should remember or write down. So I, I'm grinding up my sulfur first in the mortar and pestle, and then I'm going to add it to zinc. Sulfur has some crazy static electricity thing going on too. It, it just gets everywhere. And it smells monkey too. All right, throw that in there. Now, this is something that we should not do in class because it's going to make a tremendous amount of smoke. So we will go outside. If you want to join me outside, um, go ahead and head out there next to the street. I am going to need a firefighter, so I got you. I'm trying to see you. Well, it says room temp. Um, yes, please. Follow me on Instagram at Dane underscore stills. But I'm glad you like it. It actually smells low. Yeah. Shh. Your rubber hose is quite. Uh, Take physics and you'll find out why. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of water in there, but we should be okay.
we can see the white aluminum bromide that has been lined on the surface and also aluminum bromide vapor condensing to solid. Here we are scraping the solid aluminum bromide formed in the reaction. Yeah. Once again, the, uh, in this experiment, we are going to react metal, liquid bromine. Yeah, bromine's a liquid, and the aluminum bromide is a white powder. Can we do that? Yeah. All right, so if synthesis is putting two things together, decomposition is breaking one thing apart. A decomposition reaction breaks something into its elements. Yeah, the, the blue stuff is just dish soap. Hydrogen peroxide. This is also hydrogen peroxide. This is the hydrogen peroxide that I was playing with last week. We're going to see how well it performs. If it's better or worse than the 3% off the shelf stuff. How much I have I'm glad you asked. The formula for hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. peroxide alone, it's going to break down. It's going to decompose into H2O plus O2. Oxygen is going to be a gas, the liquid is going to be a liquid, or the hydrogen is going to be a water liquid. And this stuff is liquid dissolved in water. Uh, so is this something you can balance? Yeah. Give this a balance try. Only when it's in ions. Okay. And but it is not effectually an ionic compound. This is uh, iodine. The ion, the uh, the iodine ion acts as a catalyst to break the reaction down. So I'm gonna put a little catalyst notation up here. So we need a, an iodine ion you can dissolve a lot of potassium iodide in a small amount of water. How hard is it to get all this? Like, I know, like, Chinese peroxide is not under, but, like, all the hydrogen like, Where do you go to get them? You can buy all the stuff online. Okay. So you guys got it balanced? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's physics, but I'll explain why. Um, actually, it actually is a little bit of chemistry. Remember how we talked about when electrons gain energy, they jump up? Yeah, sure. Well, if you give them a, the right kind of energy, they'll jump, 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 and they'll leave. And what happens with aluminum foil is the electrons are jump, 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 and they're leaving, and they're basically trying to create a circuit. They're trying to leave the metal. Well, if they give them a place to go, like the metal sides of a microwave, then they'll jump, and that's where the spark comes from. Eventually, you get enough sparks, it starts burning the aluminum itself. Fun fact, if you get a circular dish of aluminum and put that right in the center of your microwave, it will not burn up. You can put it in your microwave just fine. Because what happens is the electrons just cruise around the outside of the aluminum dish like an ice skater going around and around and around. Now, if you take that same dish and you fold it, then it'll burn up because the electrons will actually hit the end and just jump off. Hit the end and jump off. But yeah, they're basically absorbing so much energy that are going uh, jump, 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 boom. All right, so uh, have we balanced this? Yep. How do we balance this? 
two, two? Yep, yes. two, and then two, and then so one. So you put a two here, and you got four hydrogens, and then you get a two here, you get four hydrogens. <laughs> now you got four oxygens, and you got two and two, four oxygens. Okay, okay, cool. Now, let's see which one. So this little one is the 3% uh, that's been sitting on the shelf, and this is the, the, the stuff that I put together. Let's see how they do. I'll pour half in here, and half in here, and give them a shake, give them a shake. 